Hi guys, it's Ben here. The World Cup 2018 is upon us. The best international tournament in the world. Arguably the best football tournament in the world, full stop. We only get it once every four years and I just can't help but think about it all day at the moment. It's just the most exciting thing. Even though it's in Russia, even though this should have been in England, as we all know, um, we can still get excited about just this absolute festival of football. I cannot wait. We are only three days away now. Uh, even if the opening game is an underwhelming one, Russia, Saudi Arabia, um, we've then got just days and days and weeks of just non-stop international football, just colours, culture, fans, just absolutely everything you could want. I cannot wait and it's time to make my predictions. And the best thing about this World Cup is it's gonna take my mind off transfers because I'm sick and tired uh, of transfer season already. I just wanna know where we stand as a Liverpool fan. Uh, the number for Keir stuff over the past few days has been a horrible, horrible distraction. Uh, it's time to get stuck into the World Cup. And yeah, these are my predictions. This is, uh, you know, I've not obviously seen every single qualification game. I've not seen every single one of these teams in action. But I've got to make my predictions because that's what the World Cup's all about. We've all done our brackets. We've all done our, our bets and everything. Um, so it's time for me to share with you what I think will happen. So let's take a look at the groups. Some tough ones, some, some groups of death, some, some difficult ones to, to predict. I think Group H with Senegal, Poland, Colombia, Japan. Uh, all quite evenly matched really. Um, group D is quite difficult to predict with Iceland, Argentina, Croatia, Nigeria. Um, Belgium and England should get through. You know, Germany's group's quite easy. Brazil's group's quite easy. Um, Fran you know, some of these groups are quite, are quite, quite straightforward really. Uh, but I'm going to show you uh, exactly where I think everybody is going to finish. So there we have it. Let me know what you think about this. So Group A, I've got Uruguay winning it. Uh, I think they are a team that could go relatively far. They, they've obviously got a great strike force, uh, a solid defence. Diego Godin in there, still, still one of the best centre backs in the game. Obviously Suarez and Cavani up front. Um, behind that, I mean, it's pretty much. Uh, a coin flip to be honest. I know there's a lot of talk about Russia being really poor going into this and Saudi Arabia likewise. Uh, Egypt obviously have got Mohamed Salah who apparently will be fit uh, for that first game against Uruguay. There's a lot of pressure on his shoulders but we all know what you know we all know what he's capable of. I've got Russia going through in second here. Um, I'm not saying that with confidence but I just think the fact that the host nation um, might just you know carry them through here that obviously with the fans behind them uh, but I'm, I'm far from confident on that group b quite straightforward spain and portugal i don't think i need to explain that group c now it's not it's not um absolutely obvious he'll go through with france i think france should have no problems um they seem to you know i mean their squad at the moment is full of exciting young players i'm sure they'll get through Behind that, there's a lot of talk about Peru being a decent outfit. I've not seen them, I'll admit. Um, but having listened to the podcast and kind of read up on it, Peru are not going to be uh, whipping boys in this group. But Denmark, I think, will just about have enough quality to get through, though. Group D. Now, obviously, Argentina are the favourites for this group. Uh, I, I just think there's always one group where someone you don't expect to win wins. And I, I've, I've just got this down as that one. It's, it's not really anything... Um, scientific behind my prediction there. I just think Croatia are a decent side, a good tournament side. I think they should have. I think they, I think they should have got a lot further in the Euros. I thought at one point they were going to win it. Um, they obviously got knocked out by Portugal. They were playing some lovely football there. Argentina. I'm just not that convinced by their squad. I don't think their defence is great. Um, obviously, their attacking wise, they're, they're the absolute best in the world. But I'm just not fancying them in this tournament. I'm still backing them to go through though. Um, Group E, Brazil, obviously. Um, after that, again, it's a bit of a toss for coin, but Switzerland seems to always just plug away in tournaments, do quite well. Um, obviously, got, they've got Shakiri, who's been linked with a move to Liverpool. Um, so, Ferovic up front, who you know might be a good pick for some fantasy teams. Um, but yeah, I've just got Switzerland going through there. Group F, Germany, uh, many people's favourites to win the tournament. Um, I, think they'll, I think they'll get maximum points from the group. Uh, and I've got Mexico going through with them. Um, just don't think Sweden are that good anymore. Korea could, could do something. Both of them could, but I've just got Mexico edging that. I think that'll go down to the last day. Group G, England's group, I think we'll get through. Um, you know, relatively straightforward game against Tunisia, although not a gimme. Panama should be a gimme. Um, and then I think by the time we play Belgium in the last game, we'll both already be through. Uh, and I think we'll rest one or two players. Belgium have got a stronger squad, they'll just edge England out. Group H, hardest one to predict. Uh, I've got Poland winning it pretty much just because they've got a world class striker. Um, and that they've made a decent enough impression in, in tournaments of the past. And Colombia, again, they've got a world-class talent there in, in James Rodriguez. I mean, Senegal aren't exactly bereft of talent. They've got the likes of Sadio Mane, um, Koulibaly, um, many other stars that, that could, 
could uh, have a lot to say for themselves. But that is my group prediction. So let's get to the interesting bit. Let's get to the bracket of the last 16. So if all goes as I said, then this is what it's going to look like. Uruguay versus Portugal, what a tie. That is Suarez versus Ronaldo. Uh, France versus Argentina. I mean, it just gets better and better and better. Um, Brazil, Mexico, Belgium, Colombia, Spain, Russia, Croatia, Denmark. Germany, Switzerland and Poland, England. Now, quite a lot of those, I mean, obviously it may not go this way, but quite a lot of those are quite straightforward for, for, for the favourites. And, you know, there's one or two tough ones in there. Um, but let's have a look at what I've predicted for what I think will be the last 16. So there we have it. I've got Portugal edging out Uruguay. Now this, I mean, that's the sort of game that could go to penalties, to be honest. Um, you know, Portugal obviously did so well at the at the Euros, winning it against all odds. Ed Air, all people getting the winner. Um, just a few doubts over Uruguay's midfield. I know it's stronger than it was um, last time out. Um, you know, they obviously got to the semis a couple of tournaments ago. They've got a lot of pedigree. They've got Suarez and Cavani who know each other so well. They've played up front together for so long. Um, but I'm, I've just got Portugal edging it. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to put money on that, but that's just how I've got it. France, Argentina, again, how do you pick between them? I mean, Argentina may well win their group and it would be France, Croatia maybe instead. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I've, I've got no idea really. But, I mean, France, Argentina is so tight. I've just got France winning it. I, again, it just comes down to Argentina's defence. I'm not convinced. Um, and I think the likes of Mbappé, Griezmann, Dembele, um, you know, all that attacking talent. Nabu Fakir, who we dare not mention as a Liverpool fan. Um, I think, I mean, Griezmann's a big contender for the Golden Boot. He had a great Euros. Uh, and I've got Portugal, France there as a quarter final, a repeat uh, of the Euro 2016 final. Brazil should beat Mexico and Belgium should beat Colombia. Not gimmies, I mean, especially Belgium, Colombia, but I think that would make for a cracking quarter final. Um, Spain to beat Russia, obviously. Um, I think Spain. Whoever they play, uh, it, you know, assuming they win that group, whoever they play, it's going to be quite easy for them to get into the quarterfinals. Croatia, I've got there to beat Denmark. Um, again, just just too much quality, I think. Um, now, Germany to beat Switzerland, of course. England to, to brush past Poland. Um, I think it would be great if England get to the quarterfinals. Not something they've done for a, for a couple of tournaments now. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not much to ask because it's a... To, just to finish second in that group and then you know the prospect of facing Poland or whoever wins that group whether it be Senegal or Colombia or Japan um, England will have a fighting chance against any of them so so yeah England have got a nice draw in that regard so there we go that is the quarter final lineup Portugal France Brazil Belgium Spain Croatia and Germany England now it gets very very interesting so let's look at Portugal versus France I mean this was a bizarre game in the Euros you had the Ronaldo injury and France did everything but score. It was in their their own their own stadium, obviously, and they just couldn't get the job done. Um, this would be a this would be such an intriguing game. Um, have France got the discipline? Have they got enough leaders in that side? Um, still doubts over Didier Deschamps. Excuse me. Selection policy. Um, will Pogba even start? Um, he's got so many. He's got an embarrassment of riches um, in, in the attacking sense. Will they go for a four four two? Will Olivier Giroud partner Griezmann? How, how do you get Mbappe and Dembele? Um, on the pitch as well as those guys, you know, that, that's what makes you think they might go for a 4-4-2. You've got Nabu Fakir in there, I mean Payet didn't even make the squad, Lacazette didn't even make the squad, Martial didn't even make the squad, it's, it's just ridiculous how many attacking you know, players they've got. And a solid defence, you know, Varane and Titi, a great centre-back partnership. Um, will Mendy get another left back? I don't know. Um, you'd assume so, Hugo Lloris, I'm not his biggest fan, but um, he is obviously capable of having good games. Um, France, very much a force in this tournament and rightly among the favourites, um, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's something to consider. Brazil, Belgium, what a, what a tie this would be. Have Belgium actually got it in them to go and beat the likes of Brazil in a tournament? Um, for me, it's very possible, but uh, I, I'm wearing a Brazil shirt for a reason. I, I, you know, I'm backing them. I'm backing them to go far. Um, Spain, Croatia. I think Spain would just have too much, you know, tournament now. Um, all the cliches, but plenty of quality, still plenty of youth in that side, even though uh, the spine of it might be aging slightly. Uh, and then Germany, England. So without further ado, let's uh, let's look at the results and I'll kind of justify them. So I've got France beating Portugal and getting into the semi-finals. Brazil just having too much for Belgium. Um, Spain to beat Croatia and then... Uh, Unfortunately, I think England are going to bow out to Germany in the quarterfinals. It's going to be an all too familiar scene um, for the English, but I think I think I think they can have a good tournament, and I think 
in general, the public are kind of getting behind England now more than more than perhaps in tournaments of the past. Um, so you know, a, a good quarterfinal showing will be something to build upon for England. But yeah, ultimately, I think they'll bow to Germany, and then that will leave you with a semi-final lineup of France, Brazil, and Spain, Germany, and you know, you cannot get much better than that. So a 1998 World Cup final repeat in France versus Brazil. Um, I mean, it's it's. The odds, I don't know what the odds would be. I think Brazil would probably be slight favourites if this were to be the semi-final. Um, and then Spain, Germany for the other one. I'd probably say Germany might be slight favourites with the bookies. Let's see what I would say uh, would be the results for these. There we have it. I have Brazil versus Spain as my final. Um, Brazil, you know, they've got demons from the 2014 World Cup. That's 7-1 defeat at the hands of Germany. But this... I wouldn't even have, obviously it'll be in the back of their minds, being the fact that this is a major tournament, it's the first one since then, as far as World Cups are concerned. It's a completely different squad. The defence has changed. You haven't got David Luiz in there, who was on a mad one, really, against Germany. You haven't got Dante, who just wasn't good enough. You've got Thiago Silva, you've got Marquinhos, you've got Miranda. Plenty of options there in defence. Obviously, Marcelo coming off a great season. Um, so we'll see what they go for there. Fernandinho in midfield. I think him and Marcelo will be the only survivors from that 7-1 uh, defeat. Obviously, Neymar was injured then. Uh, Coutinho, Jesus, Neymar, Firmino. Uh, you know, a few of those guys are relatively new to the setup. Um, and, you know, we'll just be chomping in a bit to succeed in this World Cup. Spain versus Germany. I mean, this really could go either way. I'm not as bought into Germany as I normally am in tournaments. I've just got a feeling Timo Werner isn't quite going to... Um, pull it off, <laughs> that could completely come back and bite me, but um, this season at Leipzig he wasn't quite as prolific as he was the season before. Um, and I just think that Germany side, there's question marks over the defence, and not been in the best of form. Um, so yeah, I'm just not sure. And Spain, yeah, I mean, we, Gerard Piquet, we don't, we don't know the situation there. He There was rumours earlier that he pulled out of training. Could he be out of the World Cup? Honestly, I don't know at the time we're recording this. Um, so we'll have to see. But even so, I just think David Silva coming into his latter years is, is playing his best ever football. Iniesta's still in there. You've got the youth of Isco and Asensio. A proper striker in Diego Costa. Um, yeah. And, and you've still got, you know, Busquets in there and Jordi Alba, who is a great outlet for them. I just think Spain will have enough to reach the final against Brazil. As for the winner, let's reveal who I think is going to win the World Cup, the FIFA World Cup 2018. Will it be Brazil? Will it be Spain? Now it's time to find out. And there you have it. The bracket is complete. Brazil, in my mind, the clue is in the shirt, guys. The clue is in the shirt. Brazil in my book, are going to win the World Cup. Um, they're due one. They haven't won one since 2002. Um, I, I just, I've just kind of always had a bit of a, a love affair with Brazil, um, just growing up as a kid. Whenever you, I used to watch all the little videos of previous World Cups, all the kind of... Everything was just all about Brazil. They, they play the best football, you know, back to the Carlos Alberto, the Pelé days, um, through to... Obviously, when I was, you know, very, very young, the 1998 World Cup, the Rivaldos, um, Bebeto, I remember, uh, Romario a few years before that, of course, Ronaldo, uh, Roberto Carlos, Cafu, um, just a wonderful, wonderful team. Always have been, always been great to watch. Less so maybe 2006, 2010, I guess they went off the boil. Um, but now, yeah, such attacking such exciting attacking players and I think a good enough defence to be able to um, complement that. So yeah, I'm backing him to go all the way and I'm backing Neymar to be the Golden Boot winner and the player of the tournament. I think he's going to absolutely light up this World Cup with the likes of Coutinho in and around him, the likes of Gabriel Jesus, who's just a potent goal scorer. Guys like Willian and Firmino who can do damage off the bench as well. I just think they're going to have enough to get over the line in what I'm Hoping it's going to be a magnificent tournament, but there's my prediction. Brazil to be Spain in the final. Neymar golden boot. Neymar the main man. Messi goes another World Cup without winning it. I'd love to see him do it. Of course I would. I'd love to see England do it. Um, but yeah, uh, I've, I'd have no qualms whatsoever with Brazil winning this World Cup. That is what I think. Now, please leave a comment with your predictions. Um, I want your winner. I want your golden boot. I want your player of the tournament. And anything else, where do you think England are going to go out? What's going to happen with England? Or can they win it? You know, they're 18 to 1 shots. Can England go all the way? Can Harry Kane captain England to their first World Cup in 52 years? I don't think he can. I think they can go to the quarterfinals before they inevitably lose to Germany, who will themselves lose to Spain, 
who themselves will lose to Brazil. Now, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. I cannot wait to watch this tournament. I'm going to be doing plenty of videos throughout, so do subscribe for more of this sort of thing, as well as transfer news, because who doesn't love that, even if the World Cup is going to distract us. Uh, and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, and I'll see you next time.